Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer on this Saturday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time. Also today, uh, a feast day of a saint who, near and dear to my heart, uh, if only because when I was a child growing up in Detroit, uh, I went to a Catholic school for 12 years, the same school from first grade through 12th. And uh, the name of the school was St. Martin of Tours. And today we celebrate the feast of St. Martin of Tours. Now, to be honest with you, growing up, didn't know much about St. Martin. Um, I'm sure they taught us, but I was probably out the window, out to lunch somewhere, uh, you know, not paying attention, which I was really good at uh, growing up. I mean, I I got good grades in the early years of elementary school. When I got into high school, I was sort of an average student. Uh, you know, it was uh, just the way my <laughs> my life was. I was, uh, I mean, I did, I graduated, I, I had a B average, and, you know, it was, I did okay, but... I wasn't what you would call an exemplary exemplary student by any means, uh, but the nuns were, you know, they were stern, they were um, uh, strict, and uh, they were knowledgeable and wise. And uh, I look back fondly at the lessons that they taught me, not just academic lessons, but, but life lessons. The sisters that taught at St. Martin were the... Uh, from the convent in Monroe, Michigan, the Immaculate Heart of Mary Sisters, uh, of which one of the primary motivators in the Curcio movement here in Atlanta is a, uh, a, a big part of. Sister Margaret, you might, some of you might know Sister Margaret if you made a Curcio weekend in the past. Now she's since kind of retired, but she's still around. And God bless her, um, she didn't teach at my school, but she knows a lot of the nuns that I did have as teachers. Most of them, of course, have passed on. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, fond memories of, of my days at St. Martin of Tours uh, Elementary and High School uh, in Detroit, Michigan. So St. Martin... Uh, a saint from long ago. He lived in the 4th century, in uh, the 300s. Um, when he was a young boy, he decided to become a catechist, or a catechumen, wanting to uh, join Christian faith. And uh, his father was a pagan and a soldier and uh, didn't like the idea, and so drafted uh, young Martin into the service at 15. Uh, he was drafted into the army there in France and uh, while serving in a small village uh, somewhere in France, uh, Amiens, Amiens, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, um, he encountered a poor beggar during the winter months. It was freezing cold out the beggar was near death from cold. Martin didn't have any money, so he took his coat and he cut it in half and he gave half of the coat to the beggar. Later that night, Martin had a vision. He saw Jesus wearing that half coat and was telling the angels with him, blessed is Martin for just a catechumen he has given me this coat to wear. I mean, there's uh, something direct from Scripture there, right? When, whatever you did for the least, you did for me. Martin was given that beautiful uh, vision and decided right then and there he was going to get baptized, and he did. And uh, then uh, as his faith grew and he grew, he was actually a... Uh, uh, was ordained he was bishop and his uh, flock was in France he was the first um, 
catechist, if you will, a first evangelist in that part of the world, in France. He's called the Apostles, the Apostle of Gaul, which was the ancient name for that part of the world, what is now uh, France, was called Gaul, G-A-U-L, and uh, Martin was the first uh, apostle if you will, in that part of the world and uh, converted many pagans uh, to the faith. And uh, yeah, he was uh, uh, just a remarkable uh, human person. And uh, so today on the Feast of St. Martin of Tours, uh, we ask for his blessing, his intervention, his intercessions for us in our world. Help us to recognize the needs of the poor and respond in kind like Martin did. Who knows, maybe we'll get a personal thank you from our Lord himself as Martin did. Uh, why not, huh? Anyway, uh, our gospel today is uh, this beautiful story from Luke. Let me go back, I wanna look at it and refresh my memory because my memory is like a sieve. Things escape constantly. Bear with me. This app is wonderful. It has all of these things for me at my fingertips. Um, the readings for every day's Holy Mass, the, uh, the evening prayer that we pray together, it's all here on the iBrievery app. Ah, yes. As I just glance at the first line, I'm recalling exactly what uh, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. Trustworthy with dishonest wealth. Okay, what he's trying to tell us here is to, to be trustworthy, to be good, um, to do good things, um, whatever the circumstances of our life happen to be. And if we're faced with using uh, means that uh, were maybe accrued dishonestly by someone else, uh, but we, we, we have to make use of them, turn those negative attributes into something positive. Make something good from something that's not good change it. And then Jesus says when we can do that, then we will find favor in heaven. So when you're confronted with something less than stellar, improve it, enhance it, glorify it, make it better, uh, turn it, turn something negative into a positive. And if we can you know, make little changes like that. Take something that's that's bad and turn it into something that's good. You know, take something bad, do something good with it. Um, so it it's something that will be rewarded. It says right there, Jesus said you will be rewarded and you'll be given greater responsibilities. If you're if you're successful with this you know, you're, you, you, you know, be careful because you're going to get busy. Uh, God's going to see you doing these good things. And he's going to give you more to do. So uh, let's not be lazy in our faith. Huh? And let's, uh, let's respond best way we can and turn lemons into lemonade. So let us pray our evening prayer on this feast day of St. Martin of Tours. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's law it is, there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. For the peace of Jerusalem pray, peace be to your homes. May peace reign in your walls, in your palaces, peace. For love of my brethren and friends I say, peace upon you. For love of the house of the Lord, I will ask for your good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When you rose from the dead, Lord Jesus, you formed the church into your new body, and made of it the new Jerusalem. United in your spirit, give us peace in our day. Make all nations come to your church to share in your gifts and fellowship, that they may render you thanks without end and come to your eternal city. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. From the morning watch into the night, I have waited trustingly for the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak in Israel, on the Lord. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel, indeed, he will redeem from all its iniquity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen with compassion to our prayers, Lord. The forgiveness of sins is yours. Do not look on the wrong we have done, but grant us your merciful kindness. From the morning watch until the night, I have waited trustingly for the Lord. Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. We possess the prophetic message as something altogether reliable. Keep your attention closely fixed on it, as you would a on a lamp shining in a dark place, until the first streaks of dawn appear and the morning star arises in your hearts. First, you must understand this. There is no prophecy contained in Scripture which is a personal interpretation. Prophecy has never been put forward by man's willing it. It is rather that men, impelled by the Holy Spirit, 
have spoken under God's influence. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. His splendor reaches far beyond the heavens. May the name of the Lord be praised. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. At midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Just a spoiler alert, that is from tomorrow, Sunday's Gospel. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. At midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Everyone who waits for the Lord finds joy. Now we pray to him, look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, you washed away our sins in your blood. Make us always remember your wonderful works. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. You called men to be heralds of your good news. Make them strong and faithful messengers of your kingdom. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. King of peace, send your spirit upon the leaders of the world. Turn their eyes toward the poor and suffering. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Protect and defend those who are discriminated against because of race, color, class, language, or religion that they may be accorded the rights and dignity which are theirs. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. May all who died in your love share in your happiness with Mary, our mother, and all your holy ones. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Let us conclude our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God of power and mercy, protect us from all harm, Give us freedom of spirit and health in mind and body to do your work on earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, rest well, and a blessed Sunday to you all tomorrow. We'll see you then.